There are hundreds of forum and Reddit posts from people who are flabbergasted at how or why their ice chest is deformed, defiled, or destroyed. And when you spend several hundred bucks on a fancy roto-molded cooler, it's not unreasonable to be irritated by something like a warped lid. But fear not, you can save your chill box from a similar fate, whether it's a high-end Yeti or a budget buy from Walmart. Today, I'll guide you through the common crimes against coolers and show you how not to ruin your cooler. Gear up and get outside. Mistake number one, leaving it in direct sunlight. Think about it, coolers are made of plastic. Heat is used to mold said plastic into the shape of a cooler. So does it not make sense that exposing your plastic cooler to high heat might make it malleable and change its shape a bit. One of the most common problems that comes from this is a warped lid. If exposed to too much or too hot direct sunlight, the lid can start to bow upward on either end. Some coolers will regain their normal shape once they cool off, but on others, this lid warping breaks the air seal, which lets air in and out. This makes even the fanciest coolers way less effective at holding ice and keeping the contents inside cold. I've seen dozens of reports of this from Yeti, Arctic, Cabela's, Engel, Coleman, Lifetime, Ozark Trail, and other coolers too. So it's not just one brand or one cooler construction type to look out for. Pretty much any cooler is susceptible to this. The solution, keep it out of direct sunlight. Put it in the shade, indoors, or under cover, and it shouldn't lose its shape. Mistake number two, storing it wrong. Don't store your cooler where it's too hot. Heat can soften and warp coolers. Extended cold spells can make them brittle. Large temperature swings from hot in summer to below freezing cold in winter can break down the plastic even faster. Coolers can even warp before they're delivered to you from being stored in some retailer's super hot warehouse. So don't store coolers outside, in the trunk of a car, in a shed, in the attic, or even in an uninsulated garage that heats and cools quickly. Rather, store them somewhere that is insulated, such as indoors, in your basement, or in a garage where it's out of direct sunlight. I keep mine in the garage and it's fine without any climate control. Keep it up on a shelf if you can, and be sure to keep it away from nasty chemicals that may also live in your garage, like paint stripper, carb cleaner, and other solvents. Mistake number three, not taking care of the leftovers. When I get home from a fishing or camping trip, I'm usually worn out and haggard. The lazy man inside tells me I can just clean out the cooler in a few days. But once ice has melted, if there is still food inside, it's gonna get grody. If you don't wanna ruin your cooler, either add more ice so it keeps cold or clean it out ASAP. Anytime your food's packaging has disintegrated or something like meat or dairy is floating freely in the water, you gotta clean that whole cooler out or it's gonna become a bacterial breeding ground. And if the germs don't get you, the stench will. This is especially important if your cooler was full of raw fish from a fishing trip or wild game meat from a hunting trip. So clean it up right, which leads us to the next cooler blunder. Mistake number four, cleaning it wrong. Your cooler doesn't need abrasive scrubbing or boiling water, either of which can damage the plastic. All you need to clean a cooler properly is a sponge, water, dish soap, and perhaps some baking soda or a little rubbing alcohol for tougher stains. Using water alone can leave behind nasty odors and bacteria that will lead to mold and stink. But harsh chemicals could discolor or deteriorate your cooler. And while it may be tempting to put a small cooler in the dishwasher, don't. Cooler plastic is not made for high heat, so the hot water and drying functions of a dishwasher could melt down or deform your cooler to the point it's unusable. What I find works best to clean a cooler is hosing it off in the yard, then going to town with a magic eraser. These magic sponges have worked amazingly well to get gunk and stains off my coolers. Mistake number five, not drying it before storing. After cleaning your cooler, or not, make sure it's dry before you store it. Otherwise, you're gonna have mold with a side of stink for your next picnic at the beach. I've got a few coolers here that just got back from a wedding. While they were only holding drinks and they've been drained, I've got the lids open to air dry until there's no moisture left in them. This will save me a lot of time and hassle next time I go to use them because they'll be clean and ready to go. Unlike some of these others I put away wet with a little grass and leaves left in them from several months ago. Mistake number six is dragging your cooler. When a cooler is loaded up with ice and drinks, it can be heavy, especially if it's already a heavy duty roto molded cooler. But dragging your cooler is a surefire way to add scuffs, scrapes, and eventually holes to the bottom of your ice chest. If you can't pick it up by yourself, grab a friend to help. But if you're solo on a lot of your adventures like me, consider a cooler with wheels. And check out the video I recently did reviewing the best wheeled coolers out there. Mistake number seven, cozying up to the campfire. It's a cooler, 
not a marshmallow. But when it's too close to the heat or the flames, it acts a whole lot the same. If you're using a cooler as a fireside seat, that's fine. Just don't keep it too close and move it back when you step away. Mistake number eight, placing it on hot surfaces. Asphalt isn't the beach and concrete isn't grass. Don't leave a cooler on blazing hot surfaces that will cook it from the bottom up. This includes leaving it in a metal pickup bed for too long. Not only will this reduce your ice retention, but it can deform the plastic or warp your cooler from below, just like direct sun will from above. If you have to put it on a hot, hard surface like this, consider laying a blanket or tarp down first to take the edge off. Shade will help, but those surfaces take a long time to cool once they're burning hot. As a rule of thumb, if it's too hot for you to lay on, it's probably best if your cooler doesn't either. Mistake number nine is kind of a funny one, leaving it in water for too long. I found an article on Artic's website that said, don't leave your cooler in water for more than four hours. That seemed oddly specific to me and made me wonder if it had to do with salt water corroding the plastic or something. So I reached out to their customer service and just asked why. The response I got also struck me as odd, but I guess it makes sense. They responded, the reason you are not able to keep the cooler in water for more than four hours is due to the fact that if submerged for so long, the water can compromise the seal and seep into the lining of the cooler. It is waterproof and if dropped in the water, it will float, but it cannot be submerged or left in the water too long. Same thing will happen whether it is fresh water or salt water. So it sounds like these coolers are susceptible to getting water inside and not just through the gasket under the lid, which might contaminate your food. See these little capped holes? Most coolers have something like this. These remain from the manufacturing process when they inject the foam insulation inside the plastic shell. As I understand it, water could seep in through there, which could then degrade or contaminate the cooler over time with mold, etc. I suppose it could eventually waterlog too. Like I said, that one's kind of an oddball, but take it for what it's worth if you do a lot of water sports. Let's recap. Avoid sunbathing. Store it where it's not too hot. Remember to clean up after the party. Don't torture it with cleaning. Dry it out, no dragging. Keep it away from fire, avoid hot surfaces, and remember, it's not a submarine. Take these tips to heart and your cooler may last as long as my grandpa's igloo here. I'm pretty sure this is nearly as old as I am and it's still going strong after all these years. A true monument to the power of proper cooler care. Or maybe it's just as stubborn as grandpa. Well, that's all for me. Now go forth armed with your newfound knowledge and save those coolers from an untimely demise. And remember, they're coolers, not cookers. Keep them out of the heat. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more outdoor gear tips, tricks, and reviews. I genuinely appreciate that. See you outside.